know that there is a <laughs> finish your sentence did you know finish that your sentence. Did no, you know there that? is a market for topless house cleaning oh. did you know that was a thing how did you find this out that's my question <laughs> okay that's actually so interesting yeah yeah no touching Mm -hmm. you can look topless house cleaning i like it cassie you still make more an hour that's good to know i'm glad i do soul retrieval makes more than topless cleaning housekeeping yeah because the wheels of my mind start to turn real quickly there well my question is what happens if you have to lean over and like they get too close to the thing that you're cleaning. Do you really want to bleach right. nipple? Correct. Well, as, in my mind, I'm like, you know, things are not where they should be. Mm-hmm. So are the, these obviously are not like people with lactating breasts that are no, doing because it. then your oxytocin would start flowing and it would be the opposite of cleaning. You would be making a, quite the mess, wouldn't you? <laughs> Could you charge extra for that? Is yeah, that a, is that a service add-on? Uh, there's also a market for you know breastfeeding mothers. There is. You know, so welcome to this episode of the podcast. Mm. <laughs> this is going to be our special edition micro mini episode as the planets all come into different alignment. Mm. We're feeling giddy. <laughs> sure, I am now. I was feeling really heavy earlier this morning, but I feel better already. So Mm. if nothing else, this is another therapy session for us and Mm -hmm. listen to it, or I'm sure there's a better, higher consciousness, more spiritually whole, enlightened podcast out there for you. If you really want that. Full moon and Virgo today, people. Wow. Virgo energy has always been tricky for me. Why is that? Tricky for me to be around. I don't have any planets in Virgo and my in the house that Virgo is in in my chart, it's just empty. That doesn't mean to say that Virgo energy doesn't affect me, but it's just not something that's, you know, easily accessible on my chart. And people who have Virgo energy drive me crazy. I don't think I have Virgo. Really? Mm -hmm. I have, especially male, especially male. um, My Jupiter is in Virgo. That's, that doesn't hardly even count. (laughs) That's how I, that's how I create abundance. (laughs) Exactly. True. But it's a generational planet. I'm talking about personal planets Mm. and mainly like your, your sun, moon rising, you know, Mm. um, males with their sun in Virgo. I've never really met one that I like. Wow. Like, like, like want to hang out with. So mm-hmm. if you're a male with the sun in Virgo and you want to challenge, come be friends. I think Hayden's son is in Virgo. It is. Yeah. You don't like him. I love him. <laughs> I adore him. He's my heart. I have nothing in Virgo at no. all. No, that's not a shock. <laughs> yeah. Virgo energy. It's, it's, they care so much about like being neat and tidy. It's just hard for them to be versatile because they're just like, well, I mean, that's not true. They can be versatile, but it, it, it feels like anxiety in the brain, like the head, just like all sorts of different places. Like, should I do this? Should I do that? Should I go here? Should I go there? Should I clean this? Should I organize that? Should I organize nothing? Should I go on a run? Should I eat all the ice cream? Like that's Virgo. It's stressful to be around. I'm like, that's my normal conversation. (laughs) I'm not a Virgo, but that's my normal (laughs) conversation lately. (laughs) You might have anxiety if we can call it that. Yeah, correct. That's a, that's a good point. Um, Jade, you're celebrating today. I am. Your Saturn's done. No, her Saturn Mm-mm. is in um my Saturn, uh, my Cancer. Cancer. Mm-hmm. Doesn't your yeah. Saturn? Were you going through a return? Why nope. Think, why nope. was I, Chiron. Chiron. Chiron return. That's yep. right. That and I'm still in the middle of that. No. Um, everyone who's in the 28, 29 year old range, that's who that's their, their Saturn returns are ending. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Chiron return. I didn't, I forgot mm-hmm. which return was returning. <laughs> There's so many returns. There's return who's Saturn. returning? <laughs> who's returning to what? <laughs> 
I was celebrating for you. So <laughs> you're like, damn, but it, you can celebrate this because my Saturn is in cancer this coming year. There's going to be a trine, um, Saturn in the sky will be trining my natal Saturn, um, as it's in Pisces. And that will be very nice and add a lot of gentleness. So I'm, I am looking forward to that. Regardless, I'm celebrating. <laughs> Cass is celebrating today. Cass, why are you celebrating? I don't know. The Um, full moon? What's the energy that's happening right now? I feel like you you made contact with a planet on your team yesterday. I feel like those are some reasons to uh, celebrate. Mm -hmm. I am just excited. So we're getting so, oh my gosh, where do we... I don't even know Where how do you to start this Just right back up back up and take your time verbalize it back up and take your time so mm-hmm. I was born <laughs> I was born <laughs> too far too you're long. like this is gonna be a really long podcast <laughs> exactly mm-hmm. uh, I did some womb healing this morning so that's where I'm like mm-hmm. I was born I was reborn this morning no um let's see so yesterday one of the things that I was getting, well, I get a lot of downloads while driving. I feel like that's a common place for people to receive those. Even if you're there, quote, not intuitive, they'll just be like, oh, look, coincidence. The license plate in front of me says exactly what I need. Oh, look, coincidence. The sign says my numbers. Oh, look, coincidence. It's my bird. Like it's people like don't realize that that's a lot of intuition speaking to you via car. Cause mm-hmm. like when you're driving, you're supposed to be <laughs> paying attention. Um, unless you're, of course, you're the new Mercedes where you're putting TikTok on the dashboard, but that's a conversation for a different day. <laughs> um, so or was, you're in a busy city. I feel like you being in Maine helps with that too. Correct. Yes. So yeah, and not beauty. having cell phone reception. That's another factor of mm-hmm. like, I have to be driving when I'm in the car. Like I can't really be talking. Yeah. Um, makes it have to be more intentional. Forced, forced intentional presence. But I, I used to get downloads when I was in North Carolina and Mm-hmm. Driving in LA, I'll still get a, a handful of them. So I was driving yesterday and um, I forget the question I initially even asked, but I was like, what the hell is this all for? Like what that, like, I actually think I was kind of, kind of ruminating as I was heading to the doctor to tell them I had anxiety again. Um, I was saying like, did we miss something or did I miss something? Or like, it is does somehow all of these signs, like not like, what did we miss along the way? Like feeling very like kind of stuck and in this rumination cycle. And I was like, you know, could we like, could my whole my conversation was like, could the universe be out to fuck us this hard? (laughs) Which sounds really funny now, but like when you're in that cycle of like thinking like you guys know, and I'm sure the listeners know too, like it feels very real. Oh Mm -hmm. yeah. It is. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, so one of the conversations I was getting was like, okay, it's coming to the end of like an era. And I was like, okay, that has nothing to do with the full moon. Like I tapped into that. I'm like, there because I was like, and then that like a 28 day cycle is not an era. Like just right. throwing that out there. Like <laughs> right. for some of us, it might feel like it, but it's like not an actual definition of an era. Um, and I got a, a message, if you will, from basically Saturn. Mm-hmm. which has been a running joke now within the team of like, I think for what, six or seven months? At least. Yeah. At least. Make Saturn my bitch. The summer yeah. actually. I was like, I'm going to make Saturn my bitch. You guys have probably heard me say it on the podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, I like got a book, studied all about, you know, the planet and you know what it does and what it causes and all of the energy behind it. And I was like, Saturn's going to be my BFF. So as I'm driving, it's like, it's the end of an era. Just keep going. You have like two more days. And I was like, am I going to expire in two more days? Like, and then, um, it's basically when I was kind of tapping in and when I was starting to like, listen and dig into like what's happening and Jay can probably go off of it a little bit more. We're shifting from being in this place where it's isolation, lockdown, control, manipulation, Mm -hmm. energy to this, this element of very mysticism Mm -hmm. of like getting into the more spiritual, getting into the more whole, getting into like being actually in like incarnated one with spirit in this next cycle um and like kind of sh- what i was getting was kind of like this download about like how shit's going to be shook sh- shake shaken up like a snow globe is kind of the visualization i was getting and you're going to start seeing things fall down really quickly 
um, the like no longer belong. If that makes any sense whatsoever. It makes so much sense. I love that Saturn was talking to you. So, and Saturn's on your spiritual team now. I guess I have a planet. I've never had, I mean, I have stars and astrological signs and constellations and, you know, astral beings, but I was like, I want, I get a planet now. This is cool. I feel like a very cool. So that was yeah. kind of the, the piece that was coming through yesterday, if you will. That's beautiful. I think that, so breaking it down just astrologically, Saturn is duty and responsibility, right? So that era of Saturn being in Aquarius, it's just a several year cycle, um, happened, you know, to it, it, like the duty and responsibility piece was what technology is serving you? How are you serving humanity? How are you working within your systems and your organizations to bring good to the collective? That's Aquarian energy. And it is kind of demanding and it is kind of tight, right? But as we move into Pisces, it's very much about um, the mysticism, like you said, Cass, and bringing like, so if you apply it, duty and responsibility to your mystical side, it's like, where is all your spiritual work? Where can you apply it now in your real life? Like, where can you take your eyes of faith and plug them into something that you can actually see and um, show show up with faith instead of just knowing you have faith. So it's like an application piece. And because your North Node is in Pisces, Cass, that's why it feels so right to you because you're being asked on a daily basis to trust the universe and give away that because your South node, the reason why, when I was talking about Virgo energy, you were like, that's my mind every day. It's because your shadow or your South node is yep. in Virgo. And that's a huge part of your energy. It's not a bad thing or a wrong thing to be in that space of like worry or anxiety, but it, if you stay too long in the shadow, you miss the, the Pisces, which is trust fall into the universe, give into the knowing that everything is working out as, sh as it should let go and let God that whole concept. So Saturn moving into Pisces is going to feel so good to you because it's like, it's almost like a really strict teacher or a guru is like coming up to you and being like, Cass, mm -hmm. it's time now, you know, this, I'm not going to be nice about it anymore. I'm going to tell you that you have to trust <laughs> when you've done all the work now, just do it. Right. So and of that's course my little now. Virgo South note is like, you have two and a half years and go. Like, <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what have I not taken responsibility for? The time is limited. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Hey, Lynn, I yeah, feel like you have words. No, I was just thinking about the words that you were saying, Jade, and on like the back end, because my Saturn is in Aquarius mm -hmm. in my chart. Mm -hmm. And so I'm coming out of that time, right? Mm -hmm. So what's the, what's the back end of that look like for us that, that is our, you know, Saturn return. You get a little break. Fucking finally. Yeah, you do. You get a little break. Anyone who's Saturn is in Aquarius, this Saturn moving into Pisces. Now that trust me, there's never a break. If we go to any person's chart, I can show you yeah. where you're not getting a break in some element of your chart. But as far as Saturn goes, any area of your life where you felt like this very, I, I describe it all the time to my clients as um, imagine a high school principal or a teacher that you actually respected calling you out into the hall. And for people like Cass, it's going to be really hard to think of someone like that. <laughs> I had one. I just went Good. through the, like 50 other ones. And I was like, but I oh, mean, like I some, told, you told me I would never be ready. You told me I would never graduate high school. You told me I'd never get a degree. I'm like, <laughs> I had to ruminate through those quick. So so that doesn't sound like someone that's worthy no, of your someone respect. that you respect. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I really needed like. to go through those. I got one. Got more. it. <laughs> got it. Okay. All the other okay. ones came to the surface first is what you saw on the face. <laughs> See it. I get so because many, many of my clients, like I've seen their chart your already. So I'm like, teacher, huh, Cass, exactly. That that's, was? that's where we band ended teacher? up. After. <laughs> okay. After so almost everyone has one 
in either high school or even middle school, college, one teacher that they respected and was kind, but they were kind of freaked out. Like if that teacher would call them out into the hall, Mm -hmm. Cass, I need to see you in the hall. It's like, oh no, oh no, what did I do? I don't want to disappoint them. I want it. That's Saturn. That's Saturn's energy. Okay. So if your Saturn was in Aquarius, you're now moving at, like you're, you're, you're off the hook. Now you the attention of said, said teacher is no longer on you so intently. And you can just kind of like relax in the class and not worry about being called out or you don't have to present right now. Right. Mm-hmm. Just sit down and there's other areas of your life where you're going to need to pay attention to depending on your chart. Kaylin's so. like, but I'm so good at presenting. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I could present all day. You know what's <laughs> funny? When you said to think of the teacher that you respected and then the feeling of them calling you out in the hallway, I can't compute those two things because the teachers that I really respected, I never they would never call you out. <laughs> and the teachers that I really fucking hated were the ones that like if they called me in the hallway my Aries fire would come out and I never got like a sinking feeling but more so like fuck with me and find out asshole even as like a little 16 year old 15 year old like that's the energy that I brought with myself I believe that so I believe that so much (laughs) which is kind of honestly how you do deal with a lot of hard things in your life you do you're either I will Folk, if if this is hard and I and I have to do this, I'm either going to focus all my energy and effort and make sure it's perfect so I don't have to be slapped upside the head, or I'm going to tell you about yourself and say fuck you. I'm either going to do one or the other. I feel like or that's sometimes kind of just... both. <laughs> yeah, isn't that weird though that I can't I can't call upon what that feeling would be like to be called into the hallway by a teacher that I respected. I'm sure there's many people listening who would. Probably resonate with that yeah Mine's not me John Gennaris. I mean just giving him a shout out <laughs> so, what was his name John Gennaris. yeah he was a college professor but he had like that very he was a CFO but Jordan Marsh Filene's like massive company and then became a teacher and like had oh. a booming voice but like a very small stature it was a very interesting like, interesting perspective and oh. would call people out like even if you did a good job he'd be like Cassandra I need to see you out in the hallway and he'd be like, you did an excellent job on that presentation. I would have definitely funded your company. Like he was an entrepreneurship professor, but like, just like, I love that. Like, oh shit. What did I do wrong? Guilty conscious, all of things. I love that because that, that, that really adds to the analogy of Saturn. A lot of people, when I'm going through their Saturn transits with them, they're like, that was a great year. And I'm like, yeah, cause you, you you did what you needed to do the last Saturn transit and you planted the right seed. So the calling out into the hallway was like, you have done well, my child, exactly. you know, and I'm like <laughs> shitting myself. I'm like, uh-huh. <laughs> shitting myself. Oh God, here comes another up level. <laughs> I constantly lived on edge in college though, because I was the youngest one by, you know, sometimes two or three years in my classes. And mm-hmm. like, it was a good, it was a good reminder of like, a, a, like it was a kind of a, I don't even know what you would call it, like a playing field, if you will, or kind of a honing in my skills of like, am I enough? Mm -hmm. Like it was because of the, that age gap thing. Mm -hmm. Well, and also because you didn't have the foundation that you needed to have to, you know, to play a factor too. (laughs) Just Just a a little bit. bit. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Well, I love that conversation about Saturn. Saturn, people are so scared of Saturn, but Saturn is he, he, he wants the best for us. His his job is to tell us, um, you're important on this planet. Your work is important. How can you show up for yourself and other people in a way that brings, you know, peace and enlightenment. So we love our Saturn and we, you know, I think the reason why we started aligned during Saturn and Aquarius is pretty obvious. Aquarius is technology systems organization for the collective. And now we get to, bring it into fruition in a Pisces season, which is really cool. Hmm. Mm-hmm. What's after Pisces season? 
So after Pisces, we're going to start over again. We're going to start the whole cycle over again. So we go into Aries, but what is that from like an aligned marketing perspective? Ooh, exactly. Great. We already know drive like your Mars is in Aries. Like we know what Aries is. We all know Aries on here. You know, we like Aries here on this podcast. We do. Two sun in Aries, your Mars is in Aries, your MC is in Aries. That's like push past that's warrior energy. That's big dick energy. That's I will take my place at this table because I belong here. Get out of my way. Um, but Aries are also really good at their highest road of fighting for the underdog, standing up for the right thing and fighting for the right thing. So we have two years to play in the mystical spiritual place to get our footing. And then we burn it all down. Seriously. Burn it. Got it. (laughs) It'll be great. So that's our marketing plan for those who are listening. If you want to mm-hmm. invest in the company, here's welcome to the inner workings of Align Social. <laughs> exactly. This was a marketing strategy meeting. We just decided to press record. That's right. <laughs> so what's funny is I could see an investor who aligns with us coming on and actually like listening to that and being like, oh, that makes total sense. Like mm-hmm. we're tracking with you. So mm-hmm. who knows? Yeah, that's pretty cool. Cool. I don't got anything else. Was it just a Saturn conversation? Apparently it was. I was saying bye Saturn and Aquarius. We bid you farewell. I also, I think that um, it would be not a bad idea to just spend a couple minutes talking about where we've all been as we've been getting downloads, messages, and pulling cards that we all keep getting the same kind of information over and over again. Mm. Um, talking a little bit about that because the, the money piece, the trusting that, that our funding is there and that our will, will be taken care of personally and will be taken care of, um, from the standpoint of aligned social generally, that's been really hard to, believe and hold on to. And so we all keep getting the same messages. I think it would be good to talk about that a little bit. Well, I think we need to start with one, one, eight, eight, seven, seven, four. Yes. <laughs> We're getting tattoos. Prisoner one, one, eight, eight, seven, seven, four. Like we're changing the song, the lame is song. <laughs> Two, four, six, oh, one. Yes. Yes. We're changing it. Can we at least to get tattoos in Roman numerals so it doesn't look like I'm a price tag? Yes. Or like you're, yeah, like you, you're an actual prisoner with a, yeah, no, we should. I, I really want one on my ankle, I think. I seriously think I want that number on my ankle. I feel like we need to at this point. Eric. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we, we, have a ta- we have a resident tattoo artist, so <laughs> we should. But yeah, tell the story. Who should tell it? Kaylin, you want to tell it? Cass, want to tell it? Well, I'll tell the brief intro to it and then Kaylin can take over. Yeah. I couldn't log on to our bank account yesterday. It just would not work for my cell phone. And normally I would just go to our bank account and I would say like, what do we have it in? Like, take a look. And we're dealing with some, I don't even know what you call it. Trust fall again. Yeah. And some yeah. <gasps> moments. Some every moments. time, exactly. Every time we look at said bank account <gasps> like that. Um, so we were on a call, all three of us. And I was like, Kaylin, can you pull up the account and see what we have in the account? And, and mind you, Cass before this was talking about like this anxiety that she's feeling and like these payments that are coming up and like, not really like trust. No one's answering my goddamn phone calls. Mm -hmm. And so it was like, yeah, I'll look it up for you. And so I like pull up the account, look at it. And I'm like, Cass, we have. One, one, eight, eight, seven, seven, four. <laughs> now, for those of you who know about the podcast and have been listening for a while, my numbers are ones and eights. Jade? My numbers are ones and sevens. And mine are four. <laughs> so, yep. We couldn't put it together any differently. Mm-hmm. No. We basically were told by the universe to sit the fuck down. Yes. Like, hold my beer, I got you. (laughs) Yes. And every time we pull cards around it, what are we missing? Da, 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 da. Get nothing. Cass, you get, what do you get over and over again? And your word today from 
during your shamanic healing effortless expansion yeah <laughs> insert the <laughs> eye roll for those who aren't watching the youtube channel exactly no it's basically go do what you're supposed to do continue following like go get a massage go play mm-hmm. go take a walk go to the doctor get your health go do all do all the things of physical body that you need to do go to the gym have fun Key, well and that's not fun for everyone but for you <laughs> <laughs> for me it's fun yeah, exactly. Um, get your house in order. You keep getting that, like yep, keep purge, purging, away, clean stuff. Yeah. Very physical. We talked about that a couple of times too, how you're just continually being called to do this physical work, mm-hmm. um, and just leave the rest to spirit. And there's very little of like, sit down, email this person, connect mm-hmm. with this person. Like it'll happen in like short bursts. Like this morning, I think I was messaging, um, an investor from Sweden at like 3 a.m. Like, because that's what you do apparently. <laughs> and then like went back to bed, wake up and it's like, okay, now it's time for you to, you know, do your shamanic clearing and go do a training and da, da, da. like, it, again, nothing that has to do with what I think I should be doing. <laughs> right. What you think you should be doing or make sense on paper even. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. And that would be kind of the same for me. Like personally, I am used to being, having a million physical things to do every day, get up, do this, do this, do this. And my physical body's always moving and I'm being called to go inside and be more spiritual and have time alone and thought and thinking and I don't like doing that. I just like, give me a whole long list of things to do and keep me busy all day long. So I don't have to think too much. If you want, I'll fly you out to my house. You can help me clean. Yes. The offers on the table for anyone and everyone who listens to the podcast. As well. I thought you already said that. Yes to that, Kaylin. I'm surprised you don't already. Oh, have I've said, said yes. Clean. I've offered. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. Every part of my being is ready to just go up and just get it all done for her. Cause that's in like a day. Do. Cause that's what she does. Yeah. Seriously. Out of the office for the next two days. Don't <laughs> talk to me. Don't call me. Let me just freaking like pull and organize. I don't know. And just purge. What I think we- I have to come too. So I can hold Kennedy. There you go. That's how we do this. Oh, perfect. Come on up. Guest rooms, re- guest rooms ready. <laughs> we can spoon Jade. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm down. You just might want to wait till next month. It's still kind of gross here. Yeah, no, don't next month it won't be like amazing, really, will it? Or is it good? No, no, no. Good here. April's not great either. No. Was April's I there in April? Great. When was I there? I think I was there March or April, wasn't I? I not this last year, but the year October. before. Yep. Maybe I wasn't. Yeah. I was there in July, May. When when was I there? The last time you were there, it was I was there in July or was it October? August? No, it was July. Cause we, well, I was pregnant. It was July that I was there. And then before I was pregnant, I was there in October. Sorry. Was I there before when you were pregnant though? Right before you had. Yes. Which is was when, that uh, August. Sept- it doesn't matter. August, September, okay. sometime in that way. Cause the leaves were changing or they were, no, that was October too. That was October. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It all blends together. When May we were in Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And right. May was uncharacteristically gorgeous. She was showing off. So regardless of where we go and what time of year, I'm sure that she'll show off. Because Savannah just showed off and now Savannah's weather is shit this week. So Mama yeah, Nature. What about you, Kaylin? What have you been what have you been going through personally through all of oh, this? It's been work- like very physical for me, I feel like, which it normally isn't. Um, just like even with the ear, ear still being plugged. Yep. Um, the pain is obviously gone, but the right ear is still plugged. My ear is unplugged for a week now. Over a week. It's Tuesday. Over a week. Mm-hmm. So, and what adult gets a freaking ear infection? Like what? Ew. <laughs> Did you Google? olive oil and garlic I've not googled it I trust you enough I just haven't gotten garlic cloves yet are you putting it in minced your garlic oh mm-hmm. yeah it gave me the full rundown of all the places she's inserted garlic 
and that they've done good for her. And honestly, the podcast deserves to hear one of your quotes because it was so golden yesterday in our world. I know. I feel like I'm missing out. <laughs> you know which one I'm talking about. Where have you shoved garlic and olive oil, Jade? But uh, but I can't remember what I said. Do you, you know said that Caleb your downstairs it? smelled like an Italian eatery when you <laughs> use them for your hemorrhoids? But you also said that ain't nobody wanting to eat at that restaurant. <laughs> yep that's right I all i get is the vision of the person from mm. um mm. my big fat greek wedding who uses windex and jay just using yes. olive oil garlic. Garlic on everything so not olive oil so yeah. yes the two places i've used garlic more places but the two places it's been incredibly impactful is my kids used to get ear infections all the time and i didn't want to always have them on antibiotics so um i would take garlic and in infuse it with the olive oil and then warm up the olive oil and just put a few drops in their ears and it would really help um the place that i use garlic is i used to get horrible horrible hemorrhoids after my first um pregnancy um and if they were <laughs> I tried a lot of things. Let's just put it that way. And somebody told me to use garlic and I'm like, I'm, I'll try anything at this point. Cause when I'm in the pain. heat of the moment. It doesn't matter. You'll do anything. anything. Like they clove? hurt so bad. Or a like, whole, yep. I chose the biggest clove. clove I could find and just shoved it right up there. And the, it was immediate relief. <laughs> I cannot explain to you. <laughs> It felt so, I'm like, oh, thank God. Like that religious garlic experience. Mm -hmm. She smelled like an Italian eatery, but ain't but, nobody <laughs> wanted to eat at that restaurant. Yeah. I have no words. Yeah. I think that is a beautiful way to end. <clears throat> yeah. Garlic, Saturn, and 1188. Seven, 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 four. Done.